Okay, we're back on the second segment. Um, I had imagined patching these together. Uh, so welcome back, folks. Um, uh, the, the second step is for Crest is our round of gratitude. And the round of gratitude, saying one thing for which you're grateful for in that moment, helps bring people together and center them in a common energy. For me with Asperger's, I dig this because I'm able to get into what somebody's feeling good about, but it keeps some of the other social filters and things out of my way. I don't have to get involved with people's narratives, how are you doing, and I don't care for the question, how are you doing? The question, how are you doing, to me sometimes can be debilitating. I, I can be walking, someone can say, how are you doing, and I like get stuck mid-stride, and I'm pretty good at being able to get unstuck and re-walk real fast. But that's like literal stuff with me. And most people don't realize that I get impacted by words like that. So the, the something that you're grateful for in that moment, um, let's do that now if we will. If you would just say, and it's not like, wow, I'm grateful thinking about that my grandchildren are visiting. It needs to be present sense. I'm grateful my grandchildren are in my house right now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's go around real fast if we would and say simply one thing for which you're grateful for. Presently, I'm grateful for this opportunity to have just caught my breath. Would you care to Sure. Um, I'm grateful for having the patience um, and open-mindedness to deal with other people <laughs> on a regular basis when I'm with my children. Thank you. I'm grateful for interesting things to work on. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for how clearly my body is expressing its exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful for the gorgeous day we're having today. I'm grateful for the opportunities that you do for me a lot. I'm grateful to get to see you do your thing again. <laughs> I'm grateful for the energy and the passion that you are sharing with us. I'm grateful for uh, the surprises that teaching a class brings. I'm grateful for the support of friends. I'm grateful for the direction my life is going in right now. I'm grateful for, that I was able to get in just a 30 minute run before the sun went down. I'm grateful for the coincidental things and the serendipity that happens uh, as I'm bumped into time at World Conference over there. Mm -hmm. Grateful for doing work that I enjoy. Um, I'm grateful that there's still there's more to do and there's still be some more to do. I'm grateful for good health. <laughs> you can be grateful for that too. friends and colleagues. And I'm grateful for the ability to live an active life. Wonderful. So we've done the Carnegie Open, the round of gratitude. The E for Crest is everyone gets seven minutes. If you have eight people on the phone, that's 56 minutes, and you can do the open and close in, in four. Normally we've been doing masterminding with, uh, with seven people. Uh, we've just started doing eight, and it's working fine. Uh, uh, so with, within this E for the crest of everyone gets seven minutes, we talked about smart goals in the previous chunk. <laughs> we talked about smart goals, and you begin by saying yes or no whether you accomplished your smart goal from the previous mastermind. And then we ask people to choose a category and then ask a question. 
the best practice of choosing a category and then asking a question is to help orient people as to what your question is really about. Like, uh, I have a, a question about marketing. How might I drive more, uh, more traffic to blankety blank page, blah, blah, blah. You know, but it, it, it might have, it doesn't matter what it is, but the, the category helps the rest of the people clue in as to the, the, the general area that you're wanting to inquire in. Then the notion is that you ask the question, and for some people, the toughest thing is to simply ask a question and then be quiet. Because from my philosophy and approach to masterminding, first and foremost, there's only one correct way to do masterminding, and that's respectfully. But then secondly, the second rule is that you can never expect anybody else to take your suggestion. When you get your seven minutes, you're going to be getting this perspective from the other people. Welcome. You're going to be getting this perspective from the other uh, six or seven people that are in the mastermind with you. And many of their suggestions are going to be contradictory. So you can't at all be expected to follow this multiplicity of advice because you just couldn't follow everyone's advice. And so it's one of those elements of so that since you aren't expected to, you can never be expected to follow others' advice, they can't be expected to, to follow yours. But the real value of the mastermind is not necessarily to get your question answered in that seven minutes, but to get the perspective so that you've got confidence to move forward. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's really a key distinction. What, what Andrew Carnegie and Napoleon Hill and most of the other early masterminders were talking about is that the value of the mastermind is to collect the multiplicity of perspectives. So after everyone gets the, their, their seven minutes, you craft a SMART goal for yourself. The facilitator then goes around in the circle and asks everybody for a SMART goal. One of the roles of the facilitator is to help folks figure out perhaps a, a SMART goal for themselves or help them with that construct. And then at the, after everybody has created a, a SMART goal for themselves, then the facilitator reads what, what, uh, what Carnegie would call his closing covenant. I know covenant is sometimes a charged word with some, and his closing covenant uses the word God, which I know is sometimes a charged word for some. I stay out of the politics when I run it, and I simply say I'm reading the words that Andrew Carnegie read in his in-home mastermind. And if you noticed on here, this technology that I helped create with Brian McLeod that we call the one hour, the Crest One Hour Mastermind is copyleft, which means you can't copyright it. And what it also means is that you can take this and reuse it and repackage it any way you see fit. If you have a preference to use the structure but read different words of the opening and different words of the closing, you're welcome to do it. And you don't need to tell me about it, and you certainly don't need to ask my permission. And, and I love hearing about how, how it continues to get used. But right now, we're, I'm going to ask Ryan to read the words that Andrew Carnegie would read in his own in-home mastermind to close. Now, remember also, he was a master of efficiencies, and so he wrote this language, or at least I imagine he wrote this language, to optimize the transition so that he would be most effective at what he was doing next. So these are the words that Andrew Carnegie thought was alchemically good in terms of making him optimally effective at what he was going to do after masterminding. I now have a covenant in which it is agreed that the mastermind shall supply me with an abundance of all things necessary to live a success-filled and happy life. I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God and my fellow human beings, to live in a manner that will set the highest example for others to follow and to remain an open channel of God's will. I go forth with a spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and expectancy. Oh, battery's going to run out. <laughs> that is the overview of the, of the mastermind. And I figured that I want to do two things. One is do a, a very short mock mastermind so that you can see how it plays out. And then the other thing, uh, uh, sorry, three things. Uh, the second thing is that uh, Hayes and I are talking about introducing this masterminding to Rainbow uh, Community Elementary School. 
and so we, we're open to simplifying it because part of the discussion Hayes and I have had is that perhaps the opening and closing are too complicated for fourth graders. And so if time allows, we can talk about how it might be simplified for elementary school students. And then for those that are interested in starting their own mastermind, uh, Ty and Duncan, we, we would like to consider using trusted sharing as a way to keep those conversations going, especially for parents of kids that are on the spectrum. Because one of the beautiful things about the technology that they have trusted sharing is that it allows for confidentiality so that you can know that nobody that isn't supposed to see it will see it. And it allows for a way for you to have your ongoing conversation with folks and to help remind folks of when it is. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's safer than Facebook and allows for greater flexibility and to add questions and things along those lines. Uh, so my email address is, is on here. And if, you're interest, if you start a mastermind or are thinking about starting a mastermind and you want help in any way, shape, or form, my art is a form that's called relational aesthetics. And my biggest medium is this mastermind construct. So it helps my career if you guys start a mastermind. So I'm delighted to help you start your mastermind. I won't run it for you, but I'll, I'll, help, I'll give you coaching on how to facilitate it and some of the best practices that I've found. Um, so before we go on and do a mock mastermind, questions? Okay. Well, my question is around the one hour concept. Yes. Because it sounds to me like if everybody has seven minutes, you're at 56 minutes, then you want everybody to state their new SMART goal. Thank you. You're saying new SMART goal for that week. Thank you. And then you're going to have the closing. This is an hour and a half in my book. Perhaps. And as I mentioned earlier, we have been doing seven. And, and seven people with seven minutes is 49. And that gives you an 11 additional minutes. And we've found that to be ample. you got to start on time. Finish on time. <laughs> Absolutely. And as an Aspie, guess what? I'm there five minutes early, and I'm ready to leave when it's done. I love schedulable things. People with Asperger's regularly love trains and train schedules. Why? Because it's predictable. <laughs> and so, yes, this is, this is, this is my utopia. You know, this, I, I can schedule it. It's an hour. I know I'm going to be off at the end of the hour. I'm done. Question over there I saw. Yes? Yeah, could you, like in the, the, the covenant, it says, the mastermind in capital shall supply me. Will you describe or tell me how you would describe the mastermind as in a B to yep. a six-year-old and then also to a 23-year-old? Fantastic question. And if you bring me a six-year-old, I'll be happy to have that conversation. Uh -huh. And I'll have that conversation for me in front of others and preferably videotaped so that it might serve others well. Without having a six-year-old here, I can't tell you how I would speak to a six-year-old. Part of my experience as a performer, I paid my way through UCLA as a magician, is, is that having a real person that you're talking to is different than imagining. So you also asked for a 23-year-old. Do we have a 23-year-old in here? How old are you, if I may? Uh, 36. Go for it. Thank you. Close enough. Close enough. I happen to use the words and the phrasing that Andrew Carnegie would use around masterminding. My own personal take on masterminding is that there is energy that interconnects us, and for lack of a better label, I'm sometimes willing to call it mastermind. I know that some people think of the mastermind energy as similar to some sort of ethereal essence that is all around us. Some people use the word nature or God in the sense or force, and to me, it is often political to use these labels or try and parse these things out. So I tend to keep my personal perspective to myself. And I hope that with a masterminding with people that appreciate that diversity is one of the keys to survival. That diversity is why we're going into masterminds to get alternative perspectives. And that diversity of perspectives and ideas has been proven to be profitable when it comes to brainstorming and creativity. There have been so many quantitative studies that show that the greatest quantity of ideas going into a decision making leads to a more likelihood of a profitable solution. And so I welcome whatever masterminding might mean to you. And I go back to the notion that the one rule I have of masterminding is that we be respectful of each other's perspectives. How is that for a 36-year-old? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ty has a question. Well, in the, in the description for the event, it was talking about this... Um, 
self-organized classroom. Yep. And I was wondering, are you going to have a component on that? This is this is the self work. I, I just gave you guys the construct. So I, I gave you how to organize your own classroom and the rules that will keep a, a classroom going on together. So the, getting, getting seven or eight people that say, hey, we're going to get together weekly and follow this construct, and it's a learning environment, is what makes it a self-organizing classroom. Okay. My, my goal, to take it on to that other part where we talked about, of self-replicating classroom, sometimes, there's been a lot of times that I've done masterminding that it's been recorded so that other people could watch it. And while I'm doing that masterminding for me in front of others, I'm partially doing it in front of others so that they might do it for themselves in front of more people so that this construct can be spread. I keep meeting parents of kids on the spectrum that talk about not being able to find parent support groups. This is, this is a structure for a parent support group. This is a structure that I've used with people for writing books. I hope I don't offend anybody. I'm going to use the S word in a moment. This is a structure for getting shit done at the end of the day. Uh, and uh, other questions? Yes. So if I was going to take this construct and create my own mastermind group, I would want to find six or seven people who are willing to commit to that full year and have some unfinished business they want to get a hold on. Perhaps and create a finished product, like a book, or would it be the same goal for all the people involved? All right, or? cool. You've got two questions, so let me answer one okay. at a time. One is I can't speak on behalf of you and your preferences. My preference is to get involved in people that want to do it for a year. The most common masterminds are like for three months. That people say, you know what, I want to get a first draft of a screenplay done in, th in three months. And so you get six or eight people together uh, that, or however many it is, that are rocking on getting a draft of a screenplay done in three months. So what, uh, th but what, what has been shown repeatedly true again and again is having that common theme. You know, it's part of why I was talking at UNCA on Saturday about how masterminding, especially for parents of kids on the spectrum, because they've got that theme. And guess what? Parenting doesn't end in three months. You know, so to me, that was part of my desire about having people that would be involved in a year. Um, so that, because imagining that, that those parents might enjoy that ongoing interconnectedness. And in years, you might choose that it be weekly. Some masterminds choose to do it for the first three Mondays of a month. And then if there are four or five Mondays in the month, those are off. You'll, you're welcome to create however you want. Your second question I've forgotten. Well, I was looking at if you have seven people, would each person have their own focus? Yes. And bring it to the group to yes. get our feedback? As opposed to having seven people with the same focus and they're just using this as fantastic, a weekly Fantastic question. This last year, we organized uh, Peace Day Asheville using masterminds. And so in that sense, we all had the common goal of popularizing Peace Day here in Asheville. Even though many of the people, we used Google Hangout as opposed to the phone, many of the people weren't even living here in Asheville. But we, would, we would each choose our own SMART goals. We were all committed to choosing SMART goals that we saw as helping to promote Peace Day here in Asheville. So you can do it either way. Some people have, have facilitators and coaches have taken this structure and made it not peer masterminding like we're talking about, but made it instructional. So that, for instance, for like NLP practitioners, there's a whole slew of NLP practitioners that use this construct, especially in the Netherlands, uh, where they will have students that, that come on. And so in that case, it's, it's one leader. There's a hierarchy there. A and when it comes to the question, the leader will tend to either answer first or ask the other, uh, other co-learners. But that, there's a hierarchy there. So you can choose whatever makes sense for you. What's NLP? Neurolinguistic programming a discipline created by Richard Bandler and a uh, partner whose name escapes me presently at, thank you, in, in Santa Cruz and perhaps. So thank um, you. Welcome. Other questions? Yes. I'm a coach and I've been part of mastermind groups before and I forget what the commitment was. I think it might have been maybe three to six months and we agreed to convene. What do you do with people that become part of the mastermind group that, and 
inevitably. Like, for instance, we had a whiner, and she was kind of a depressive, and she was a lovely person. It just, she whined a lot, and it wasn't very constructive to the group as a whole, as a collective, and we didn't know what to do with her. Hmm. Suggestions? Fantastic question, thank you. Uh, the, I have had a number of different personality types that, uh, that many of whom have, have felt de-energizing to the rest of the group. But by having, I get challenged sometimes when you speak over me or others, thank you. Uh, the, uh, the, one of the things that I have found is that sometimes when I fight with those energies, it makes it worse than better. So I had to detach from my expectation that people play by my rules. <laughs> Uh, a, a, another unusual constraint that I was at was part of how I got so many masterminds going is I used to charge $597 to be part of a three-month mastermind that I would facilitate. So I couldn't just kick those people out. What I quickly found is that I needed to over-recruit for those. And what I regularly would do would be to sell nine slots. And I never had more than seven people show up. My challenge was that the majority of times, even with people having paid that amount of money and there not being a refund, if they don't show up, there's not a refund. If they show up, there's a 100% money back guarantee. At the end of the first month, if you aren't 100% satisfied, I'll give you 100% of your money back. But if you don't show up or miss any of the first four masterminds, that, that guarantee evaporated. With that, I regularly was down to three or four people by the end of the first month. So part of my challenge as a professional mastermind leader with the satisfaction of these students at stake, sometimes, one time I literally paid a friend to mastermind with us in order to have five people. Because masterminding with fewer than five people I found loses a certain alchemical energy within it. So I generally over recruit and then we'll sometimes call upon people that I have familiarity with. Like, I can imagine calling upon uh, Ryan and saying, hey, Ryan, uh, I've got these mastermind, I've got these moms of autists, and I know you're not autistic or a mom, but we really want a fifth energy there for problems like, that, that's a stretch. But having that fifth person there really feels like a different energy to me. I love these questions, thank you. The, one of the things around the tips around masterminding facilitating is back to just basic facilitating best practices of when, when, when somebody asks their question, I'll say things along the lines of, who would like to answer that first? As opposed to a closed ended, does anybody want to go first? Mm -hmm. I'll regularly prompt with, who else has another idea? As opposed to the closed ended, does anybody else have, a, have an idea? And, and if, you're, if you're beginning to facilitate a mastermind and you want me to come on and listen and give you coaching afterwards, I'm, I'm thrilled and happy to help along those lines. Uh, and and the, the troublemakers are tough. I, I use a label some people find offensive, and so it is. There are a number of people that appear to me as IRAs. I require attention. <laughs> and, and they're not there to actually be constructive, productive members of the group. They're very much into themselves and needing the energy that, that comes, and I call them IRAs. What I've found is that little good comes from fighting with NR, NRIs. <laughs> little good comes from fighting with IRIs. You know, so I've learned to deflect and to disengage as gracefully as I can and to seek to inspire them to engage in other ways. And, and, and that's where many of the skills of being a facilitator comes in. Because I also need to honor, when I was selling it, that paid 600 bucks to have this three month journey with me. And I've said that they're welcome to this three month journey. And unless I find them being disrespectful to another, if they're disrespectful to themselves, I can't help that. If, they're if they appear to me as disrespectful to another mastermind member, they're one warning, second time, gone. And I only had to kick out one. I only, in, in all of the masterminding I've done, I'm trying to remember, there, there, was, there were two conversations and one person I kicked out. Because most of the people coming to mastermind, you know, they <laughs> you know, take the real rare bird to, uh, but so, good question. any other questions? Yes? I have maybe what's a connection. Uh, years ago we did uh, Adlerian drive-thru's parenting training. Great, I'm a the, huge fan of Adler. The class meeting structure is very similar to this. Neat. And so there's a lot of, 
the documentation on the gratitude piece. And yeah. When Winger has been a huge influence, I imagine you're with your, uh, when Winger was an academic who uh, uh, talked about revolutionary uh, learning and stuff, and, and uh, I, I believe he's retired now, he might be deceased. 70s and 80s, uh, just phenomenal stuff out there. One of the earliest on incentivization and gamification. Um, but gratitude and rewards and stuff along those lines, huge part. There's, yeah, there's uh, the, a lot of this is grounded and can be substantiated in uh, continuous learning organizations, in the fifth discipline, in CLO, that, that kind of work. Um, I'm not an academic, but I, I prefer to be called Ben. But if formality <laughs> dictates, I prefer doc, the gender neutral Dr. Ben Mack. <laughs> what was the name? Winger? Win Winger. W Y N N W E N G E R. Other questions? Otherwise, I'm going to look for four volunteers, if we may. One, two. I'm already volunteering you, but so that that'll be five. <laughs> we can do it with three. Debbie Hayes, you want to come up here? I'm going to take this. We're probably out of, or we're almost out. Four percent. Four percent energy. Okay. Uh, it would be great to have at least one more. One more person. Fantastic. Right, right up here. You guys are going to do masterminding. Right up here. I'm going to have Ryan. You're going to be the the the, the mastermind facilitator, and so you'll welcome them and then read the covenant and and. As opposed to everyone getting seven minutes, how about we simply do two minutes? Great. We'll start out with the opening. I release. I release myself to the mastermind because I am strong, but I have others to help me. I believe. I believe the combined intelligence of the mastermind creates a wisdom far beyond my own. I decide. I decide to release my desire thoroughly and trust to the mastermind, and I am open to accepting new possibilities. I forgive. I forgive myself for mistakes I have made. I also forgive others who have hurt me in the past so I can move into the future with a clean slate. I ask. I ask the mastermind to hear what I really want, my goals, my dreams, and my desires, and I hear my mastermind partners supporting me in my fulfillment. I accept. I know, relax, and accept, believing that the working power of the mastermind will respond to my every need. I'm grateful knowing this is so. All right, and we'll move on to our round of gratitude. Um, real quickly, we'll go in a circle. I'll start. Um, I am grateful for uh, the opportunity recently to connect with old friends. I'm grateful knowing that my dad is home cooking me dinner right now. I'm grateful that I have a great view of the sun here. I'm grateful for being involved in learning. All right, so this is where we uh, assume we'll skip the did we complete our SMART goal, um, but we'll wrap up with creating one. Let's go ahead into a category of a question, um, and then uh, I'll ask that question, and um, you guys can uh, help share your insights on um, my particular question. So this one would be on organization. Um, so I work at a small business and I juggle quite a few duties throughout the day um, between customer service and sales. And um, so I am uh, really struggling with um, kind of all these little things I have to do, big responsibilities, small responsibilities, busy work. Um, and so I'm just wondering, you know, how I can uh, get it organized throughout the day and, and how I can make that a bit easier on myself. And remember, we have two minutes, so, you know, quick answer, quick little insight is perfect. Where, whoever wants to go first. We categorize it. We do oh, a question. My, that was pretty much my question. Okay. Um, we answer your question? We Sometimes the facilitator will say, so who has ideas that would help Ryan okay. get better organized during the day? Thank Sometimes you. the facilitator will recap the, the question to make it tighter. Uh, 
comes mostly now out of the agile software development world, which I'm not a developer, but um, I really like them because I find, like if I, I, a task list, if I write something on a task list, I feel like sometimes I won't do it out of spite. Like I don't like <laughs> to do 